The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiecki is largely an opinion talk show. All opinions, comments, or statements of fact expressed by Gwilda Wiecki's guests are strictly their own and are not to be construed as those of the Science of Magic or endorsed in any manner by Gwilda Wiecki, Relmar McConnell Media Company, its affiliated networks, stations, or employees. Welcome to the Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiecka, a program dedicated to uncovering the unified nature of reality and humanity's ever-evolving place as truly galactic beings. For more information on the Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiecka, visit us online at www.thescienceofmagic.net. Welcome to the Science of Magic, a place where science and magic come together to transform fact into evolving truth. We're coming to you through the X-Zone Broadcast Network, xzbn.net, and can be also be found on our website, thescienceofmagic.net. I'm your host, Gwilda Wiecka. This hour, we'll be exploring the illusion of time. It's been said, time heals all wounds, yet time is not. The only time is now. Time is actually a mapping of the relative positioning of galactic bodies. Every heavenly body and grouping of bodies carries an ever-changing symphony of frequencies. This combination of energies influence the planet and all those upon her. Frequency and relativity dictate time. These galactic influences are a source of power. To the degree we're aligned with the current influences, we have the ability to wield this universal power through our will and intent. This is our birthright. All of us carrying wounding from our past to the degree we embody historical damage, we're actually aligned with and living in the past rather than the present. This creates quite the paradox. Matrices of our psyche are formed around the frequency we carry at any given time. This dictates our personal reality. Accurate perception of current reality is compromised by frequencies lost through past trauma. If we're limited to past frequencies, we cannot be present. That was then, this is now. When aligned with historical frequencies, we're interpreting the events of the moment through the lens of the past. If we go too far down that rabbit hole, we actually become so out of sync, we're out of touch with current reality, and therefore delusional and mentally ill. Throughout our lifetimes, past, present, and future, we've sustained trauma that has effectively compromised our frequency and reduced our mobility. It's also greatly diminished our ability to be present. In order to be present, we have to be able to align with the current frequencies. To the degree we've disconnected from any frequency bandwidth, we're unable to align with the current moment. All power lies in the present. As a result of this disconnect, we can only live in the trauma of the past or hopes and fears for our future, and are thus virtually powerless. Frequency dictates reality. Through frequency compromises, we're stuck in past realities and unable to manifest the reality we want. The antidote to this dilemma is going back in time to reclaim our lost frequency in order to become present. The over 50,000-year-old practice of shamanism is an ancient modality transcending time and space. All shaman are frequency masters. It's the duty of every tribal and modern-day shaman to manage and correct frequency disparity between the past events and current influences. This requires aligning with the present moment as well as past and future. While nearly eradicated, shamanism is undergoing a grand renaissance into modern-day culture. Fortunately, other powerful modalities that enable us to reclaim our birthright are also emerging. Among these are EMDR, hypnosis, past life regression, and neuro-linguistic programming. All of those, correct mo- all those current modalities facilitate frequency correction and are therefore shamanic in nature. The volatile state of the world is a result of the desperate realities, none of which are present. The only true path to peace is be here now. Every walk into the present is as unique as the individual that walks it. Time can indeed heal all wounds, 
Through transcending time and reclaiming our frequency, we can extract our power and ability to manifest the present from our history. Our guest this hour, certified regression therapist Christine Morton, is the heart of the Harmony Healing Center and utilizes over 35 years of experience in the healing arts field. In 1992, after 15 years in the medical field, she was drawn to a more holistic healing therapy and has been in private practice ever since. Her 25 plus years as a therapist, as healer, as well as a profound spiritual experience in 2001, created a perfect segue for expression into regression therapy. After this commercial break, I'll introduce Christine, and together we'll complete, uh, contemplate the illusion of time and real-life healing to be found when one transcends it, so don't go away. You're listening to The Science of Magic. Prior innovative episodes can be found on our website, thescienceofmagic.net. The scientists and the mystic have been on an age-old, relentless search with one thing in common. They seek truth. Their paths converge in the 40,000-year-old practice of shamanism, an ancient science delving to the quantum level of life, facilitating healing, manifestation, and evolution. I'm Gwilda Wiecka, the founder and director of Path Home Shamanic Arts School, a unique Colorado State-certified occupational school, training shamanic practitioners and teachers. We also provide classes for empowering personal lives through shamanism. Our certification classes are in week-long segments, enabling international participation, and online classes and long-distance shamanic healing sessions are available. Come discover the science of magic in the limitless world of shamanism. www.findyourpathhome.com Welcome back. This is the Science of Magic, dedicated to unification and evolution of consciousness. I'm your host, Gwilda Wiecka. Our guest this hour, certified regression therapist, Christine Morton. Her website, HarmonySoulRegression.com. Christine, thank you for joining us on the Science of Magic. Thank you for having me, Gwilda. It's my pleasure. Christine, what's a certified regression therapist? A regression therapist is someone who uses hypnosis to access deeper states of consciousness, which is where we have access to our memories of our past lives and, and other dimensions, that space between lives. And um, so, yeah, that gives you just a gist of what a regression therapist is. is where, where does one learn to be a regression therapist? Where does one learn? I learned this... Um, in the, uh, I, I trained with Dr. Linda Backman, and she is the owner of the Ravenheart Center out of Boulder. I uh, did some hypnosis training first so that I was qualified to do that, and then I went into the specialty work of the regression therapy. You know, as a shamanic practitioner, I've been called to do past life shamanic healing for my clients. How do you think that differs from regression, or does it? I don't think it really does differ very much. I think the shamanic um, work is very similar to what I do. We are both accessing lower states of consciousness so that we can tap into those memories. It's fascinating. Those memories are really just under the surface. And so once we drop down into those lower states of consciousness, we, we have access to those memories. You know what I find fascinating is... What is a memory exactly? Is it an actual reality we go to? Um, You know, what is a memory? Well, it's interesting. The mind records information similar to a tape recording. A tape recorder records information in the exact manner that it is received through the microphone. When a tape is replayed, it plays back exactly what was recorded. If something is recorded on the tape that is not wanted... It can't be altered by adding a change to the end of the recording. The unwanted material has to be erased or taped over. 
the mind works the same way. The mind also records a sequence of events that we call experiences. When we recall a previous experience, the mind can play back that experience exactly as it was perceived, including the emotions. If something has been recorded in the mind that is offensive to the physical and or uh, emotional systems, it cannot be changed by trying to add a different attitude or emotion to the end of the conscious experience. The change has to be made at the point that it was originally recorded and stored in the subconscious. By bringing these experiences up to the conscious mind, the individual is made aware of the exact moment that the perception was made and that maybe a better, more positive way to respond to the experience was possible. Not only does the mind know the origin and cause of our physical, mental, and emotional issues, it knows its own best way to correct them. The answers that we're looking for are inside of us, each and every one of us. So uh, what, how do you define the mind exactly in this context? Well, we have... Uh, Two, two different, two separate minds, really. We have the, what we call the, well, the brain is a, is a receiver. If you think of the brain as a receiver, and we have a left brain and we have a right brain, and the left brain is the receiver for everything that we can see, hear, taste, touch, and smell in this third dimensional reality between birth and death in this lifetime. It's that part of us that is logical and rational and detail-oriented and time-bound, and that is what we call uh, the ego. And the, this is very right-brained work, and so we have to tap into that right, the receiver of that right side, which is uh, that part of us is very creative and artistic and intuitive and spontaneous and feeling and timeless, expansive, heart-centered part of us. And it is our right brain that is our, is our bridge to our memories of our past lives and other aspects of ourselves. So when we're doing this work, we have to uh, ask the left brain to sit off to the side and take a break, because if it tries to follow us, it's going gonna, it's gonna to slow us down, and it can actually prevent us from having a successful session. The, the left brain does an amazing job of serving us in day-to-day -day life, but we are definitely going outside of its box of expertise, and so if it tries to follow us, it can, it can, it can slow things down. And so we, this is very right-brained work. So, so as I'm hearing you, the physical brain, the right hemisphere, is the one that does this work and takes us into past life regression. However, we don't have the same brain that we did in another lifetime. We have a different body. How does that work? Well, as I said, the brain is just a receiver. So um, every brain is different and unique to each body, but we are, the brain is tapping into a what you talked about earlier a frequency a frequency and so um it's interesting because something you were talking about earlier live you know our past and our present it seems like the past happened back then and our future is out there but it's actually all happening simultaneously rather than happening on a timeline linearly it's happening vertically and so we can, the brain taps into, like you said, if our, if our left brain is tapped into and uh, receiving uh, information from a past life, then that is what comes through and filters into this life and projects an overlay over it so that we can't, as you said, be present right here, right now. And it's the same with future lives. Um, they're all happening simultaneously, and um, I have a, a, an interesting metaphor that kind of explains that, but uh, does that kind of answer your question? I think so. What I'm hearing you say is if is all uh, is, is uh, based in frequency, all uh, hypothetically, all frequencies are available at any given time, but only in the moment, and that's how we're all, it's all happening at the same time? That's correct. That's correct. So if we can clean up as, uh, you know, 
our our leftover unfinished business from a past life or a future life and uh, get back to the frequency of now we get to step into our full power and our full potential. So you you made the, made the um, analogy of it being like a tape recording that you can't add on a different result at the end. You have to go in and change the recording itself. Does past life regression facilitate that? And if so, how? Absolutely. I, I am just a facilitator, however. So uh, my guide, my job is to uh, assist the client to get down to a lower state of consciousness and then follow where spirit leads. We all have guides and teachers that come in with us to do this work, and depending on what the client brings in to work on, our guides know which life we need to go back to in order to be be able to understand that on a deeper level. So my job is just to uh, assist them to getting into those lower states of consciousness and then follow where spirit leads, and then asking lots of questions about what's coming up so that we can get lots of detail. Sometimes it's uh, helpful for me to do some spiritual coaching afterwards to help the client uh, be able to make um, sense of and to help them to um, redirect their, their energies around all of this. But most of the time, that's not even necessary. The client, this is an integration process. It usually takes a couple of months to fully integrate the work. And over that couple of months, there's this gentle shifting and unraveling. And it's so fascinating after I uh, do a follow-up two months later after I've uh, worked with a client. It's so fascinating to hear them say, oh, my gosh, I don't, e- I don't do that anymore. You know, <laughs> it's just been this gradual, slow unraveling. So how do the events of our past affect our present? What kind of signs and symbols do people need to look for to know if they're actually um, superimposing the events of the past on the present and becoming dysfunctional because, they're, because of that? Well, um, again, this uh, left brain is usually what is getting in our way. The left brain is... Um, um, so, I, I sorry, I got sidetracked... Past life regression is a a useful tool for accessing, uh, getting to the root cause of things like anxiety and depression and fears and phobias and repeating patterns in people's lives and uh, relationship issues and physical issues and grief and fear of death. So those are often some of the main things that people come in to work on. So that left brain that has to get very hardwired early in childhood, and that's a normal thing. It's not a bad thing. We, that, we couldn't have survived childhood without that, and we couldn't have figured out how to survive and to function in this third dimensional reality without that. But um, if the left brain remains out in front running the show too long, as you said, it, it begins to become quite unbalanced and unstable. And so those are the those are the things that people come in to work on anxiety and depression and fears and phobias and and really dysfunctional patterns of you know dysfunctional relationships over and over again and and that kind of thing so those are the things that let people know that something's out of balance and that there's something that's triggering from either a past life or a future life so like neurological uh, ruts, people get stuck in a neurological rut. Yes. yes. So, so they're responding according to the rut versus right action in the moment? Exactly, exactly. We can't be present if we are constantly reacting, knee-jerk reacting to uh, things that um, aren't even about this current life. However, there's usually triggers in current life that help us know that um, so there's repeating patterns that tend to come up in current life. Uh, and we call this past life regression because almost always when we get into a session uh, and we ask to go back to the root cause of, of our issues, we almost always go back into a past life because that's, that's where the root of it is. But not always. Sometimes we go back into current life because sometimes the root of it is based in current life. 
And sometimes if we've got a very deeply seated issue, uh, we have to go back into current life first to unlayer things before we can get back into a past life. So it's kind of like that peeling the onion theory. Yes, exactly. Peeling <laughs> layers, yes. Yeah, so, so again, it's frequency. You have to step it down to step it back up. We're That's going to... Correct. We're going to need to take a break. Christine and I will return to our discussion after this short break. We're coming to you through the land of leading-edge paranormal broadcasting, the Exxon Broadcast Network. Don't miss the other fine shows and hosts on xzbn.net. You're listening to The Science of Magic. TheScienceofMagic.net. I'm Gwilda Wiecka. We will be back, so don't you go away. The scientist and the mystic have been on an age-old, relentless search with one thing in common. They seek truth. Their paths converge in the 40,000-year-old practice of shamanism, an ancient science delving to the quantum level of life, facilitating healing, manifestation, and evolution. I'm Gwilda Wiecka, the founder and director of Path Home Shamanic Arts School, a unique Colorado State certified occupational school, training shamanic practitioners and teachers. We also provide classes for empowering personal lives through shamanism. Our certification classes are in week-long segments, enabling international participation, and online classes and long-distance shamanic healing sessions are available. Come discover the science of magic in the limitless world of shamanism. www.findyourpathhome.com Welcome back. This is the Science of Magic, a place where magic and science come together to promote enlightenment. I'm your host, Gwilda Wiecka. Our guest this hour is certified regression therapist, Christine Morton. Christine, we were talking about time, and that always twists my head up, (laughs) but if time is just frequency, and uh, if we go into past life, if you will, and alter frequency from our history, are we able to change future events? Absolutely. In fact, the, um, when we do this kind of work, it actually collapses time because as long as we're stuck in a pattern, we have to keep repeating it over and over and over again until we get to the root of it and, and begin to heal that. Once we do, we can, we can do what we call jumping tracks. So if you think of a life as having many, many, many different outcomes depending on the choices that we make, and so, uh, so you think of that of parallel universes, as if, if you will. So if you think of a life that, if you think back into your life and you think there was a juncture where you, ha- if you had just made a different choice right there at that moment, your whole life would have been different. And so that's what this work allows us to do. It allows us to go back, change the frequency that we're still holding on to from something in the past, and bring that back into our now and shift that, and then it collapses time. So what we get to do is we don't have to keep repeating that over and over and over again, and we get to move into a higher frequency. So is there a provision in past life regression? Um, so it's kind of like being at a, at, a, at a shopping store, right? Okay, I could do this, I could do this, I could do this. And what's the outcome if I do this or if I do this or if I do this? Is there a provision for a person to kind of get a preview before they make a choice? No, we, the person does not have any idea where they're going usually, and I have no idea where they're going. It's really about them coming in to, uh, to understand something uh, that's going on in their lives, uh, some kind of issue that they're having problem with. And so everyone comes in um, very excited and a little nervous because we don't know where we're going for the most part. Uh, we just have to be in a place of trust and trust where our guides take us. The um, the exclusion to that is that sometimes 
people will have spontaneous memories of glimpses of a past life, uh, either in a dream or, or in a waking state, and they will come in sometimes saying, I want to go back to that life because I want to understand it better. Now, I can't ever guarantee that we will be going back to that life, uh, but generally speaking, um, if that's what we come in to work on, our guides, that's where our guides take us. But, uh, again, I have no idea where the session will take us. My job is just to follow where spirit leads and then to gather lots of information, ask lots of questions so that we can get lots of details about what's coming up. How much does the client's uh, conscious intention play into where you go? Well, it's huge uh, because, you know, if sometimes I get people that come in and say, well, you know, I don't really have anything that I want to work on. I, I'm just curious who I was in a past life. And, well, that's pretty vague. And so what we tend to get, I find, is uh, some pretty vague sessions. The more specific that a person can be about what it is that they want to work on and what, what their questions are, the more specific that our guides are as to what they show us. This brings up another interesting question. I can't tell you, <laughs> over the 40 years working with people, how many um, Nefertitis I've seen or how many uh, Cleopatras I've seen. How can so many people have the same past life? And wh- how does that figure in there? Well, we're tapping into the collective consciousness. And actually, uh, in the work that I do, I, you know, that's one, of the, that's one of the questions that gets asked is, will I, will I learn that I'm somebody famous? And um, it, it is possible. I have had it happen. But it's very rare, and, uh, and it's very unlikely. Most people find that they have lived very ordinary lives and sometimes as uh, poor folk or peasants, and these ordinary lives can often be rich with lessons that can provide healing in our present life. Now, what is fairly common sometimes is for people to go back and they are key players uh, around a fer- famous person's life, you know. So, uh, yeah, there, that tends to be a, a, a fairly common theme where there's some famous person and they are some kind of um, um, key uh, side figure to that. Got it. And you know, the other thing that I've noticed, just depending on the stability of the individual, but I've seen people get so caught up in who they might have been in a past life and, and you know, uh, talking to people about it and reiterating it, that they get hung up on the story of the past and that seems kind of counterproductive to me. Have you experienced that? And if so, what do you do about it? Absolutely. Uh, Past life regression is a tool. It is a tool to assist us in coming more fully into the present moment in this lifetime. So people who get, uh, but it can be a trap. The past life regression can be a trap. Those people who who get obsessed with knowing uh, who they are and wanting to do one session after another after another, we're we're not getting anywhere. So if if the work is is being done, you know, being processed properly, we don't need very many of these sessions because the work is so powerful. It takes us right back to the root cause. We get to look at that, that that bringing that up to the conscious mind begins to help um, integrate that into our life and it begins to unravel it and shift it. So speaking of which, which, what tools do you give your people to integrate the events of the past into the present so they have access to the expansion in frequency? Normally, I don't have to do much of anything. Um, the integration process uh, is, takes on an energy of its own. The session is not over when the person walks out the door. In fact, it's usually just beginning to pick up sp- speed. We're opening up a doorway with this work, and if a person will go home afterwards and give themselves some quiet time to process and read through the notes that I've sent home with them or listen to the recording and maybe do some journaling about some of the insights that are coming in, what they will find is that this will continue. They will continue to get more insights and more information. And this can go on for days and even weeks. It, it takes a couple of months to fully integrate the session. It's a process. 
So for most people, I don't really have to do anything. It's, it, they, they are able to do this on their own. Occasionally, people will call me afterwards and say, you know, I'm really having a hard time understanding uh, how to integrate this and, and what, what, you know, how to make use of it. And so then people can come back in. We can do some spiritual coaching, and I can kind of help them put things into perspective. But most of the time, I don't need to do that. So do you think that past lives are actual incarnations on the planet, or are they allegorical to help us recognize where we've disconnected? Well, that's interesting. You know, uh, people ask me sometimes, do, um, do I need to believe in past lives in order, to, uh, in, for, in order for this to be an effective tool? And technically, the answer to that is no. Uh, some feel that the memories are just metaphors for the conscious mind to be to make sense of. Uh, most people believe that the recall is very real. Um, however, it doesn't really matter. The proof is in the results. The images are legitimate expressions of our subconscious mind or our inner being, and we can use this information to integrate into our current life experience. And this allows for healing, which can greatly increase the quality of our lives. So I'm going to put you on the spot now. What's your belief? What is my belief? Well, um, my belief, again, is that we are all living in sort of a virtual reality, if you will, and that all lives are happening simultaneously at the same time and depending on what as you said the frequency that we are tapping into at the time um, depends on what kind of a what quality of a life that we have and you know basically I believe that once we uh, we clear up enough of this extraneous energy that is pulling us from from past and from future and become centered in this in, uh, in into our full power and into our uh, into our being then we eventually get to the point where we would step outside of that virtual reality and no longer have to participate with it you know what i find fascinating is watching small children make belief of lifetimes they'll get together and you're the cowboy and i'm the indian but actually they get very complex what do you think's going on there and do you think it relates to past life Oh, I think so, yes. Uh, there are fascinating case histories uh, of children who spontaneously remember uh, their past lives, and th- those are incredible, incredible things. And I think um, a lot of times children will demonstrate, for instance, you'll have a, a little boy who, who is obsessed with playing with army figures and, and you know, uh, these little G.I. Joes, you know, and just constantly, you know, and I think that is a very um, indicative of something that they've played out in the past. So how can a parent use this information to help guide their children? Well, I think uh, understanding that our children uh, have their own internal guidance system and encouraging those children to tap into that internal guidance system um, and and to trust that our children are uh, on a journey. And everything that they will experience in this life is, is important and it is happening exactly the way it's supposed to. So I think really it's about the parents stepping back and understanding that this is the child's journey, and they will be drawing to themselves what they need to learn this time around, and that they have an internal guidance system that if they tap into, will help lead them and guide them. Sure takes a lot of responsibility out of it, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, there's somebody well, else running know, the show. <laughs> well, we have to set, you know, a structure. You know, we have to make sure that they're safe and that their basic needs are met, and that they, they get the emotional support that they need. But basically, this is their journey, 
and we have to let them have their experiences and know that it's going to be challenging in places. We can't, we can't shield our children from pain and suffering. This is part of, uh, in fact, the more we try to do that, the more we uh, create problems for them down the line. So, um, yeah, I'd have to say that that was one of my greatest challenges as a parent is not being overprotective and trusting that my children's guides and guidance would see them through and I could just hold out the wing and do the best I could. <laughs> we're <laughs> going to have to say it's been one of my biggest uh, teachings and <laughs> my children have we're, been we're my gonna have biggest to, teachers this time around. Yeah, We're going to have to take a quick break. Christine and I will be back shortly. You're listening to The Science of Magic, thescienceofmagic.net, the place where altruistic professionals of science and the esoteric create common ground for the betterment of our world. We're brought to you by the leader in paranormal, spirituality, and alternative health programming, the X-Zone Broadcast Network, xzbn.net. Stick with us. We'll be back. The scientists and the mystic have been on an age-old, relentless search with one thing in common. They seek truth. Their paths converge in the 40,000-year-old practice of shamanism, an ancient science delving to the quantum level of life, facilitating healing, manifestation, and evolution. I'm Gwilda Wiecka, the founder and director of Path Home Shamanic Arts School, a unique Colorado State certified occupational school, training shamanic practitioners and teachers. We also provide classes for empowering personal lives through shamanism. Our certification classes are in week-long segments, enabling international participation, and online classes and long-distance shamanic healing sessions are available. Come discover the science of magic in the limitless world of shamanism. www.findyourpathhome.com Welcome back. This is the Science of Magic, bringing together gifted people of service to the world. I'm your host, Gwilda Wiecka. Our guest this hour happens to be one of those gifted people of service, certified regression therapist, Christine Morton. Christine, what do you think is the single most powerful thing we can do to become more present? Well, I think it's really about uh, mindfulness, uh, understanding that we spend very little time in the present moment, especially when we're not uh, practicing that. So meditation, I think, is a huge uh, benefit uh, to, to us. And so just establishing a 15 to 20-minute daily meditation practice can change your life. Uh, the left brain it got, has got us pretty much sealed into this third-dimensional reality, and we're like we're 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 like a fish in a fish tank. Uh, the fish bumps up against these four glass walls, and it and it thinks that this is its whole world. It it might have some vague idea that there's something more out there, but for the most part, uh, this is its whole reality, and we are like. Uh, fishes in a fish tank. Uh, because of our lack of perspective, we're making decisions and taking actions based on a very limited amount of information. We don't know what we don't know. Uh, but that meditation practice begins to quiet the mind and uh, to begin to open up the gates to um, the that right brain that that is our bridge to other uh, dimensions and, and larger aspects of ourselves, and we begin to tap into those realms, and and inspired thought then can come down and and uh, make a huge difference in our lives. So, if I would had to pick one thing, I would say meditation uh, and mindfulness practicing. And there's a million ways to meditate. Uh, 
you know, we can, but we can meditate also in, in just doing ordinary activities, washing dishes or taking a walk in the park or driving our car. It's really about being present in the present moment. And when you really start practicing this, it's, it becomes quite interesting because what you realize is that we spend very little time in the present moment. How many of you have actually uh, gotten in your car and gotten to your destination and, and have no memory of how you've gotten there? Your body goes into automatic pilot and the mind, there the mind goes, it, it's jumped off and it's thinking about something you forgot to do yesterday and thinking about something you've got to pick up at the store on the way home. It, it's just all over there. Um, but if we practice bringing the mind back and making it very present and paying attention to what's going on right here, right now, that begins to uh, make a huge difference. So before we get too far into this last segment, would you mind telling people, uh, one, where they can find your services, but also can these be done long distance and do you work long distance? Yes, past life regression can be done over the phone. And so I, I do do sessions over the phone. And I can be reached at the Harmony Soul Regression website. So it's HarmonySoulRegression.com. And on there you can uh, find my email and, and uh, find different ways. I have a self-hypnosis audio on there that's free that you can download to your computer and practice getting down into those uh, lower states of consciousness and um, so did I answer your question? I forget you did, exactly. and, and thank, yeah. thank you for that beautiful free provision. It's, it's nice that people have resources like you. Thanks for bringing that yeah. to our people. So yeah. what exactly is between lives information? Oh, well, between lives, that's a, that's a fascinating realm. Um, Dr. Michael Newton is one of the forerunners in this work. He is a psychologist that had been doing past life regression with his clients for years and accidentally stumbled onto a technique that allowed him access to people's life between lives. And he did over 7,000 regressions um, exploring this realm. And what he found was that again and again, people were consistently describing a very specific place of peace and compassion and unconditional love and beauty and humor. They can be quite funny on the other side. Uh, they're always telling us to lighten up, that we take things way too seriously. Um, so the soul goes here to heal and to rest and to study in between incarnations and then to discuss and decide the next incarnation. So uh, the uh, past life regression is almost always trauma-based because we don't tend to go back to those easy vacation lives because we're done with those. We tend to go back to those really traumatic ones that we're still holding on to um, uh, energy from that we've brought through into this life to, to work through. But that between life realm, there is no trauma. There's no drama. It, again, it is just this amazing space of unconditional love and healing and it's powerful. Sounds heavenly to me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when, the, uh, between, I'm sorry, go ahead. When we reincarnate, can we move back and forth in time, like choosing to come in before the last time we were here or after? Well, yes, and that's, that's, what I, that's definitely what I believe, that we, we're... So I, one of the really great metaphors I like to use is, is the Star Trek uh, show uh, where they, on this... Um, on this Star Trek, the Enterprise goes out for years at a time, and people can't get off to go on vacation, so they had this thing called the holodeck. Mm -hmm. And so you'd go up to the holodeck, and you would program in where you wanted to go on vacation. So Captain Kirk would say, I want to go back to the 1800s, and I want to be a sheriff in the Old West, and I want this person to be my deputy, and I want that person to be my barmaid, and I want, and so, and then he goes through a door, and he's in period clothing, and he's there, and uh, all of the players are in place. And I believe the difference between what we are experiencing here and what Captain Kirk is experiencing in the holodeck is that he remembers who he still is in the holodeck. We, however, come through what we call the veil of forgetfulness, 
And we agreed to do that because we knew that in order to learn the lessons and achieve the goals that we set up for ourselves this time around, that we needed to forget everything. However, once we reach a certain level of soul progression, it is not only appropriate for us to have access to those memories, it is the next step. So as in the hologram, a holodeck, Captain Kirk this time can choose to go back to the 1800s, and then maybe next time he'll decide to go back to 500 A.D., and then maybe next time he'll decide to go back to the 1940s. It, you got it's it. the so, same with us. Yeah, so this, this was from uh, Star Trek The Next Generation, right? And wasn't it Captain Picard and not Captain Kirk? Um, it was Captain Kirk. It was back in the old, it was one of the older shows, yeah. Oh, I thought the holodeck was off the next generation. It was Picard. Oh, well. <laughs> well. So I've got a question for you. We're getting close to the end here. But when do we stop recycling and just move on? Well, I think, you know, we go through thousands of lives. You know, people ask, how many lives have I had? And, and usually the answer to that is hundreds or thousands. And uh, once we reach a certain level of soul progression, then we get to step off that wheel and and choose not to come back. Although many times we will continue to choose to come back, so that we can facilitate the uh, the healing of others. So we come back to be a teacher or a mentor and to assist others. Uh, so sometimes we will we will continue to come back into this realm just to uh, facilitate others. So here's a mind binder. Can we reincarnate in the same time where we've been before? Uh, yes, it is possible. Um, something that we talked about is parallel universes, and so it is possible to come back into a, the same scenario uh, so that we can make different choices this time and jump those tracks and get into different possibilities uh, of that life. Got it. Got it. So um, if we get into different possibilities, can we run into ourselves there? Um, I think that the system is pretty well um, um, situated so that uh, that doesn't happen. But I, I believe that anything is possible. I have not run into that kind of thing happening, but it wouldn't put, I wouldn't put it past that being, um, uh, thing that it could be uh, available. Okay. Well, we're just about out of time, but I'll tell you what. Let's look up at some point whether the holodeck was on Star Trek The Next Generation or well, if it was be, on Star you Trek. May be, you may be correct. You may oh, be I'm correct. a Trekkie. Uh, yeah, yeah. So you probably are correct. And so that's good information for me to know. And so going forward, I'll want to use, um, you know, uh, Picard. But uh, anyway, you get the gist of, of the holodeck and the, the sense of time and how we can go back and forth um, in, in time. And we life isn't happening chronologically this life and then the next life and then the next life. We can bounce around in that virtual reality. Um, yeah, it's a wonderful point and a great analogy, a great analogy. We're just about out of time, and I want to thank you so much for being on the program with us. Thank you so much for having me. It's been my pleasure. All right. Our guest this hour has been Certified Regression Therapist Christine Morton. Her website, HarmonySoulRegression.com. This has been The Science of Magic. Remember, you can always listen to past thought-provoking episodes on our website, thescienceofmagic.net. Be sure to join us on the next episode of The Science of Magic. Until next time, dear ones, may you be blessed with knowledge and comforted with love as you navigate the corridors of time.